Hello and welcome to this video. <laughs> so in this video, um, I would like to introduce you to Pascal, who will be uh, joining me today. <laughs> and we are going to talk a little bit about this scene, uh, which again, f uh, for those of you who've seen it before, I took from an Evermotion scene uh, using 3ds Max to import using Datasmith. Nothing fancy. And uh, Pascal and I have been playing around in this scene together for quite yes, some time. Yeah exploring uh, nat natural light uh, yeah, natural looking light and uh, having different kind of controls over that um, either on a sort of an autopilot that uh, unreal proposes and very interesting because it suggests many very interesting lighting uh, conditions you know uh, and uh, the other way is to control everything and uh, we like to be also uh, uh, we like to be surprised, but we also like to be control freak. So... <laughs> especially, especially you, maybe, Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of background. Um, Pascal, well, actually, why don't you talk a little bit, uh, two seconds about yourself, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what we're going to do together at the end of the video. Um, why don't you say what, what you do, yeah. because we're here talking about lighting. Yes, I'm a, a cinematographer which means I supervise, you know, I create the look of a film through uh, light and, and uh, framing and post-process also. So uh, it's, uh, it's all about uh, creating uh, emotions, you know, atmospheres, and also directing the spectators, uh, the viewer's eye in the frame. So, so with the light, with the framing, with the camera movements. So that's uh, what I do on film sets. And uh, I discovered uh, Unreal uh, Engine two, three or four years ago. And since then, I, I'm fascinated by the possibilities of uh, you know, real-time rendering of such uh, intricate uh, um, lighting, um, you know, uh, bounces and diffusions and uh, uh, the, 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 the handling of the light in Unreal is uh, really uh, uh, mind-blowing. Uh, and uh, Fabrice uh, showed me many, many things, many possibilities. And I, I did some uh, VR stuff also. But mm -hmm. so that's why also we are uh, obsessed by frame rates and uh, not to be too heavy because yes. I'm, uh, I'm easily a bit, um, you know, overwhelmed by the system. So I want lights everywhere. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we will see that it's not a good solution to, to put too many lights. Exactly. So we thought in this quick little video, we would talk to you a little bit about uh, this uh, system. So what Pascal was just mentioning. And so I'll turn all these lights off and show you uh, what the issue is, which is not really an issue. It's just more of a, a technical point, we would say. So let's turn the uh, directional light that we have here and just in passing, this is obviously in ray tracing. And then we can already see we have some global illumination showing, which is quite beautiful already, I think. Um, so typically we would have the sun, uh, the directional light, which is the sun, which controls the atmosphere, which we have turned on on the outside here. But the atmosphere, uh, the blue sky is not currently casting a light into the scene for that we need the skylight and so we'll see that if here i'll turn the skylight on and uh, actually that's just giving us a good result right off the bat just because we had prepared it and sometimes we get a bit of a uh, unexpected unexpected result uh, for example if i put everything on default uh, which you would have Maybe something like this, which is uh, undesirable, or um, uh, or some other uh, undesirable uh, s um, result. We kind of, I don't know if you can actually see anything uh, that would look a little is bit it, like that. Is it, is it only a question of intensity, or when you are on the autopilot light, uh, I see you are mod modifying the intensity scale? Uh, because well, it that one is what I want to illustrate in the video today, in fact, because normally here, uh, the skylight, the intensity of the skylight that 
is given uh, by default is, uh, as you can see, way too bright for, mm -hmm. and here we have the skylight that is in captured scene mode. So uh, it's completely ignoring what you might be wondering about, which is this gray sky, which I'll talk about another time. Uh, but here, uh, the skylight is looking for the atmosphere in the way, way, way distant background and using that to cast a light into our scene. So uh, here we might be able to uh, change the exposure, which will uh, change things quite a lot. So here, for example, I'll uh, have it, you know, decrease it on on uh, on 11, but it's still kind of too bright uh, in, in yeah. my uh, judgment in order to really kind of have com control over it the ways uh, we would like to. So I generally decrease the intensity to about 0.2, and then we've okay. kind of got a, a much um, better balance uh, between. You, uh, okay, the two. I, are you already in a in a camera here? No, no. So the the aperture of 11 you just uh, set up is just a, a sort of an abstract one. Completely so arbitrary. Yes, okay. In fact, I like to. Uh, compare this to the ISO number on your digital camera. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. But except the, the fact that you are not in a camera, you are on a, you are just contemplating the scene here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sort of mimicking our eyes. Yes. 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 Uh, although, and this is again something that we'll talk about in great detail in the lessons, but. Um, here where we put it into manual so that we are not actually mimicking the eyes uh, we're more mimicking yeah. a camera uh, yeah. which has a fixed exposure generally. is that uh, does that that have something to do with you know automatic eye adaptation that unreal proposes yes also? that's yes. exactly okay. what we're talking about <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> I, I, I uh, ask dumb questions, but I want to be sure. Okay. No, 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 no. Well, that's great. That's that's really useful I, for people watching because uh, yeah. they might not know about this. Uh, I always feel a lot of people do know it. So here, I'll put it. I'll I'll turn off the exposure compensation in here mm -hmm. in the auto exposure uh, histogram metering mode, which is the default. We'll have mm -hmm. uh, this kind of uh, eye adaptation, which you saw the. Um, so here, in theory, it's quite difficult to demonstrate. But if I go in some very, very dark corner, the mm -hmm. uh, you see the the brightness increases, and then if I look up again, the brightness is going to decrease. Yeah, which so, is uh, which kills the atmosphere. If you if you go back to the wide mode and uh, uh, you just um, light the first light, the sunlight, you know, you you had dynamic direction light, but you kill the skylight. Will yes. the autom automatic, uh, you know, exposure level uh, compensate for the dark uh, ambience we had? Uh, yes, it would do. Okay. Okay. So let me just finish here. Uh, what I was going <laughs> to say about the skylight, yes. because as you saw, we had quite a drastic change here when I changed this real-time capture mode here, and so here we have a typical. A kind of uh, skylight that throws um, light absolutely all around, like a fill light. Yes. And then here with this real-time capture mode, it seems to take into uh, account a lot more the fact that there's the openings and that we're inside um, some mm. a, a place. Yes, because we have windows, for example, on the right side of the frame, uh, where there is supposed to be a blue sky uh, on the other side of the sun, which is orange. So it's uh, quite realistic yeah. to have a sort of a kind of a blue feel uh, in the in the room. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And then here again we have uh, the cast ray tracing shadows here, which give us uh, the ability to em emphasize that even more. So here I might actually need to increase the uh, intensity to one. I thought to to really show here the problems that we're beginning to have which is this very, very strong, uh, and I'll turn the sun down a little bit because that's kind of too, way too strong, but we have a very strong sort of uh, reflection, sort of specular um, on the inside here. So that's the problems that we begin to see and that are like here, for example, in this mirror, which is very, very bright. So that's the kind of problem that we begin to see uh, using this method, which is, um, well, that's fine. You know, we have uh, issues all the time. So that's why we thought we would 
propose this other method method so I'll turn all of this down off which is using these rect lights like this yeah the control freak mode <laughs> yes exactly and you see that there is a, immediately some more atmosphere and also we can light uh, what we want to instead of uh, you know uh, having some sort of automatic uh, light we position the sun for the directional light before in a way uh, that it um, it enters the three windows on the foreground and uh, until the background uh, to you know to sculpt to model the the space in the room and also on the walls you know you, you see something so we try to mimic with the red lights outside of the windows the same global direction but uh, each light was directed to have to uh, for a specific effect and uh, that's something we do on uh, on film sets uh, each source has a, a function you know uh, this one lights the, the actor when he enters the room this one uh, lights the background this one is a backlight uh, when the actor uh, stops on his first mark uh, and um, mm. and so on so that's interesting when we are control freaks oh wow uh, to uh, you know to light and uh, to put yes. shadows where we want yes very, so you very see we have our eye adaptation on still ah, so yes. we, if i turn everything on again we'll have a, a little bit of time to adapt so but, uh, you know it's interesting also it gives another feeling of the scene and uh, yeah we we can uh, be uh, you know uh, stay aware of the happy accidents like that when you touch a button you didn't want to, or you know, move a move a number, and then you see something you didn't expect to see, and maybe a better idea to light the scene. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, so great. Well, that's our little presentation. Um, <laughs> we still and... have three more minutes if you want. Three could, more could, we, could, could we see through the windows where you, we place the red lights yes. uh, outside of the model? So I'll go, I'll get out of the camera mode. So the lights we have um, are here. So we have, I'll hide the spotlights because we don't want to see them. So we have these uh, rect lights which was, uh, this one had the particularity of having these very long barn doors, which was very precise. Mm -hmm. Oh no, actually That's, all of these. Yeah, yeah, because we wanted to direct us with, uh, to, to specific spots, yeah, on the yeah, scene. Yeah, 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 those and, two uh, because they were mimicking the sunlight. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And especially you see on the top of the frame on the top left, we have a, a small one there to uh, put a strong uh, sun ray on the, the last room we have in the in the mm -hmm. camera, the, the, the distant room. And this one is relatively important because it's very bright. So it yeah, it um, it forces the eye to go on uh, this bright spot and uh, at the back of the the set, and uh, it uh, it's what um, it it makes uh, the picture a little bit you know richer. It gives production values as we say, because you have more to see than just the kitchen. You, you have a space, you have something to discover in the frame. But that's why we, we put a special light on the background. But as I said before, uh, I try not to light too much. And as you see also, maybe we, we can end with that, but the, these three lights are uh, put in a way that we think it's only one light, what we call the, the key light, which is the sun, you know. So, so we, key light yeah, watch, we'll it's very one. important to yeah, it's very important to to respect the fact that there is a hierarchy in the in the lights when you light something because we have only one sun on Earth. So, uh, as humans, we are uh, accustomed to 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 see something where light comes from only one apparent main source, and everything else, for, for example, the reflections on the ground and the, you know the dynamic lighting in, in a room is generated by this original source. And uh, when the source is, for example, very sharp, very strong and uh, yellow, then everything in the in the scene will inherit that, you know, so, and it, this thinking about the sun, 
uh, uh, traversing, you know, the, the atmosphere and the clouds, hitting uh, assets on the ground and humans, and then going in our eyes and our cameras can give you uh, you clues how to light, you know, because this of this hierarchy of uh, and the and this sequence of events, the the light coming from the sun goes through before entering your eye mm. and your your brain. So that's our um, our tree we put here uh, in between the videos. Yes. It, between the videos, the, between the uh, between the windows. The windows. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking about the video. Um, we 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 wanted to give some texture to the flat light entering because when you have a flat surface, it's maybe it's, uh, something interesting to to do to give some texture to the light. You know, so the the surface feels more lively, more organic, um, less studio, less uh, film set. You know? Yeah, exactly. And you so you can immediately okay. see the difference with that. Mm -hmm. Great. Well. Obviously, we have a lot more that we could go on about and yeah. uh, we're actually going to prepare a series of webinar together. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if you're interested to follow that with us, we can, um, I'll put a link below and then you can uh, enter your email address and you will receive more information about the program we'll be putting together. Yes, it's very exciting uh, to, to discover that with you, Fabrice, and uh, to uh, ping pong with you about, uh, you know, uh, possibilities in unre Unreal, possibilities in Unreal film sets. And uh, this course, uh, you know, pollinization is very interesting for me because it changes the way uh, I, um, I light on a real set. And uh, Well, that's, um, yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And same here, you know, it's uh, if we're coming from architecture, having studied architecture, we generally are completely foreign to a lot of these ideas, uh, especially regarding lighting. And in the work that I do, I always find it uh, absolutely paramount that uh, you have some knowledge about um, uh, how to do this, because that's basically how you're going to make things look. Uh, good <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in many, many ways. So uh, it's a fascinating subject to, to learn from somebody like you who has so much uh, experience in the real world. So um, again, there's going to be much uh, talk about that and how we yes. handle that going between the two medium uh, and understanding things. Uh, mm -hmm as well as the fundamental kind of uh, fine art principles like color and con uh, sort of balance and uh, things like that. Shadows. Uh, shadows, shadows, understanding yes, shadows, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. which may seem just so trivial and obvious, but mm -hmm. uh, when you actually start digging quite deep into the subject, you realize that, uh, well, it's the um, subject of uh, many years of study for uh, for sometimes a lifetime for anybody who's interested in the old masters, for example, or even photography nowadays. So, um, great. Well, it was a pleasure speaking to you today, yes. Pascal, and I look forward to speaking to you again yes, very soon. And in length. In length. <laughs> yes. So uh, more time. Yeah, so if anybody, if you are interested in finding out more about the upcoming course, please click the link below, enter your email address, and uh, you will get um, uh, more information coming very shortly.